Good morning, and welcome to Coffee and Components. Today, we'll be talking about a part from Analog Devices. It's a latch-up proof CMOS analog switch called ADG5434. It has four independently selectable single-pole double-throw switches, and again, was brought to us by Analog Devices. The ADG5434 is considered a high voltage switch as you can use a supply voltage up to 48 volts, though 40 is the recommended maximum for single supply operation. If your analog signal is bipolar, not a problem. The device can also operate from dual supplies up to plus minus 22 volts. The input lines are all 3 volt logic compatible and there is no external logic power supply required. The switch is fully characterized at several supply voltages, which takes the guesswork out of our design. The datasheet tells us flat out that the on resistance is about 12.5 ohms if we use the plus minus dual supplies, and that it's about 26 ohms if we use a single 12 volt supply. On resistance flatness hovers around 2 ohms for this device, making it fantastic for gain switching applications where you may need minimal and predictable distortion. These devices can really be used anywhere that you're currently using a small relay, considering they can switch over 200 milliamps per channel. If your design is currently using up to four independent relays, you can combine all this activity into a single chip, which is available in a tiny four millimeter square package. For the more visual among us, this is a standard single pole double throw relay we're seeing. It can switch up to about 100 milliamps at 24 volts and can be controlled by a logic level. The on resistance is about 100 ohms. Inside my little spoon here, is the analog devices part that can do the same thing. Now, which would you rather have in your design? Now, many of us have been hesitant to make the switch to CMOS switches because of the fear of momentary shorts within the devices. Relays are nice and mechanical. Sure, you can get an arc between the internal contacts if you really zap it, but in general, the pole is physically connected to one throw or the other. There's no ambiguity here. CMOS switches, on the other hand, operate with a bit more liquidity, forming passages for your switch current based on the signal it received. It suddenly becomes theoretically possible for a new path between the pole and one throw to become active before the other has completely sealed, allowing current to flow directly between the two throws of your switch. That's bad, luckily. The ADG5434 displays something called a break before make action, meaning there's a set time delay between the closing of one current path and the opening of the other. The delay is different based on your supply voltages, but typically in the range of 150 nanoseconds. That's long enough for safety. The datasheet shows several example circuits for testing out various features of the device, so you can test this time delay for yourself with just a few external capacitors. The other reason you may still be stuck with your relay from the 90s is fear of latch-up. For those of you not painfully familiar with the term, latch-up refers to a fault condition where a low impedance path gets formed between supply rails inside of a CMOS device because of that darn parasitic silicon controlled rectifier, or SCR. The SCR is a quad layer bipolar device that is inherent to all CMOS IO circuitry and made early CMOS technology rather fickle. Latch-up is caused by internal electrical stress, either in the form of too much voltage across the PN junction, too much current into the gate, or a voltage change that happens too quickly. These too much and too quickly specs vary significantly by device, so plenty of engineers had a very negative CMOS experience. Believe me, I understand. I don't have patience for these things either. It does not take too many inexplicable rail-to-rail -rail shorts for me to put the darn thing in a permanent off state and go back to a favorite relay that I know will just work. But that's why I think this latch-proof switch is worth a look. It's built with dielectric trenches to separate the PNN channel transistors and prevent latch-up, even under extreme stress conditions, at many megahertz frequencies. These trenches basically act like the air gap in a mechanical relay and make the CMOS switch concept a lot less scary and more reliable. So the next time you start to reach for that same comfortable, bulky, expensive relay, switch it up and try out the ADG5434 from Analog Devices. It just might change the way you see CMOS.